Hello everybody and welcome to the Embassy Church. We are so glad to come to you in the comfort of your home. I pray that you will be blessed. Today is a very special day and I don't want to miss this opportunity to wish our dads a very happy Father's Day. Pray that you will get spoiled and hopefully you got more than just socks even though we know you need it. Some light humor to show you how special you are. Men, do you know you can never be pregnant? Wrinkles and gray hair add character. You got one mood all the time. The same hairstyle lasts for years and even decades. You have one wallet, one pair of shoes, and one color for all seasons. And the best part of it, you can do your own nails with a pocket knife. Hopefully that brought a smile to your face and set the tone for the day. On a more serious note, this may surprise some of you men. So you see, fathers, you're not only needed for the act of conceiving a child, but also for the spiritual act of raising a child. You see, Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he's old, he will not depart from it. So parents, especially dads, the onus is on you to teach the children godly values and morals. Our son needs to be taught how to respect honor, and love our daughters. Amidst the alarming rate of abuse on women and children, I want to use this platform to implore our men to be good role models so that we can put an end to gender-based violence. See, the world needs more godly men. They need men of character. They need men of integrity. They need men that are responsible and dependable. Men that provide a shelter in the home where women feel safe and loved. I know we have these men in our midst, so let other men learn from you how to be a good, good father. Fathers, I know it's not easy raising a family, especially in these tough times. So we thank you for all that you do, for the endless sacrifices that you make so that your family can enjoy the fruit of your labor. We sometimes take you dad for granted, but today we want to say we love and appreciate you. My prayer for you is found in 3 John 2, where it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I pray that you'll be emotionally well, that your bodies and also your finances to be healthy, and that you'll always stay in God. So dads, enjoy this day and may you never forget how special you are to us. The church has prepared a short program for you. Hope you enjoy and keep some tissues nearby because you will need it. You have given us the best things in life. Your time. Your care. Your love. We are truly grateful to have you part of our life. Happy Happy Father's Day, Day, Daddy. It's only for a moment you were mine to hold The plans that heaven has for you will all too soon unfold So many different prayers I'll pray for all that you might do But most of all I want to know you're walking in the truth And if I never told you, I want you to know That as I watch you grow I pray that God would fill your heart with dreams And that faith gives you the courage to dare Life 
Raul dropped his letter outside my burrow, explained Bunny. This one is for you. How kind of you to deliver it, said the job. Can't eat my legs, Just no eating yet. Yeah, you won't let her don't worry. Yeah, she's not like that. Yeah. I won't let you go. I won't let you go by her. So she won't eat you, okay? Okay? She won't eat you. She's the naughty mommy. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Can you just do a cute smile so I can see how this makeup looks, please? Oh my! Hi, Embassy family. I hope that you have been blessed by the special presentation that was put together by our team. As the leader of the empowered men of the Embassy Church, I would like to wish all our dads a very happy Father's Day. Dads, remember that good fathers do three things. They provide, they nurture, and they guide. Today, we honor you for being good fathers. We miss every dad in our embassy family this morning. We hope that you have a blessed day with your children. May you feel honored and loved. From myself and the team, we take this opportunity to say you are an asset in society. Continue doing a good job raising your children. You are our heroes. Thank you and God bless you. Hello everybody and good morning on this special Father's Day. I trust that you were blessed by all of those snippets and uh, those greetings uh, by our 
the mum of the house and also by our leader of all the men and the snippets. Man, did you enjoy those snippets? Wow. I trust that you are going to continue Father's Day uh, with the love and uh, just share together as a family and enjoy uh, doing activities as a family. Now, we are going to go into worship this morning and uh, it's Father's Day. We don't only want to acknowledge our biological and earthly fathers, but we are going to go into worship and with our whole heart we are going to first acknowledge the father in the heavens and so let's let's just gather our spirit together still yourself from all of those things that may distract you and let's worship God this morning he's our heavenly father and we are going to glorify him are you ready let's worship God with this song whole heart and then we're going to just lift up the name of the Lord God bless you
Hallelujah. Father, we just worship you this morning and we use this day not only to acknowledge our earthly fathers, but Lord, we celebrate you as our Father, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the Father of all fathers. Uh, we worship you this morning. We cease this moment, O oh God, to lift you up. Uh, we say that you are the King of glory. We thank you, God, that you fill our whole hearts uh, with your love, uh, with your peace, with your joy. And this morning, we just lift up our voice to the heavens and we glorify you. We exalt you. We honor you. We join the angels and we surround you with our praise. And we say to God, be the glory great things you have done and father this morning even as we uh, set aside this day in south africa to honor fathers we just lift our voice and we honor you we give you praise we ascribe glory and honor to you for there is none like you you are awesome O oh god in our lives we thank you O oh god that we can call you abba we thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity that we can call you Father. No other religion in the world allows their followers to address their God as Father. But Lord, we dare to call you Abba. We arise and we give you praise as the Father of our lives. Now, Father, I pray that you are going to enable us to have a heart of understanding, and even as we expound the word, it will become, Lord, a reality in our lives. We'll not only be hearers, but Lord, we'll also apply your word to what we hear through the word. Somewhere between leaving my mouth and reaching the earlobes of those that listen, I pray, God, that the Holy Spirit will arrest that word, will remove, oh God, all kinds of doubt, will remove all kinds of negative sentiment, and at the the entry point of the hearts of people, they will be able to receive this word as it is intended to be a blessing. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Well, God bless you this morning. I pray that you have your coffee and uh, whatever you, you're having out there in the comfort of your home. And you are relaxed and you are enjoying this online service coming to you. To all of our dads, I want to rise this morning and say a happy Father's Day. It's, it's, it's an honor. You know, there are many titles uh, that people may address me by and some say doctor, some say reverend, some say pastor. But the greatest title that I've ever been or that I ever have is uh, the one of daddy. When my children rise and call me daddy, it comes with all of the things that I have been able to, with the, with the help of God Almighty, been able to co-produce co or co-create with him. And uh, that's, that's powerful to have the title of daddy. So all of the daddies out there, I address you and ask you to have a happy daddy's day. All right. Now, this morning, I'm going to speak on the subject of the Father's heart. The Father's heart. And uh, I'm going to first address just a few concepts about fathering. And thereafter, I am going to, pardon me. Thereafter, we are going to speak on three principles of uh, God the Father. And we are going to use God as a reference point to fathering. Are you ready? All right. This morning, I just want to say, make a comment or make a few comments on fathers. Number one, fathers seem to be the least celebrated people. Now, when, when, when we were not under lockdown, you could make uh, arrangements into restaurants uh, on Father's Day and it wasn't a problem to get bookings on Father's Day but it is a problem to get bookings on Mother's Day. It shows you that uh, fathers are the least celebrated. 
It's, it's easier to get a booking on Father's Day than on Christmas or for Mother's Day or for any other auspicious day but Father's Day. Could it be that uh, people have become discouraged with fathers? Could it be that uh, uh, there is uh, unfulfilled expectations and people are disappointed by the roles fathers have played? And there is a thing called the absent fathers. Could it be because there are so many fathers that are absent in the presence of the life or the lives of their children? And so uh, that's one. Number two, I think that the enemy's plot in the current stage of, of, our, of our era is to undermine man's authority and also to reduce um, his manhood and masculinity and bring it to zero. And I'll tell you why the enemy is after man. Because right from the beginning, the word of God said, uh, the heel of a woman's seed will bruise thy head. And so there's always been enmity between Satan and man. And man wants to destroy, oh sorry, Satan wants to destroy the role of men in society. And I know that there's currently a movement of uh, female is the future and all of that. Uh, I want to tell you something this morning. If you give, if you give uh, consensus uh, to that narrative, then you are going to destroy the future populace. Because inside of every man is the zira, the, 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 the seed for the future populace. And if uh, you diminish the role of man, then you are going to diminish uh, the, the, the seed that he carries. And I tell you what, even if you are going to continue as a woman with the narrative that man has to be reduced, masculinity has to be reduced to zero, then what's going to happen is uh, you will break your back doing the work that he should be doing. So it's going to break your back, but it will not only break your back, it will also break your heart over the, the destruction of your sons. So never fall into the strap. I'm speaking to the church this morning. Never fall into the trap of mocking a man or the father's role in your household. I rise to tell you again that a father is needed and necessary in a house. Now, let me speak to some of the males. Making a child versus raising a child. Fathering is momentary. To father a child takes life, a lifetime. Let me say that. Fathering a child is momentary. But to father a child takes a lifetime. To father, to be the father of a child needs no skill. As a matter of fact, it can take up to a minute or 60 seconds to make a child. But it takes a lifetime to raise a child. And so uh, you, you need to understand that if you're going to be a father to a child, it takes wisdom. It takes understanding to raise a child. Did you get that? Now, I, I, I feel for fathers as a father myself. I, I, I believe that mothers have a role and we've celebrated our mothers and, and we, we, we acknowledge the role of mothers in our lives. And uh, mothers have an, have an advantage over fathers. I'll tell you why. Mothers are given the opportunity to bond with their, with their child even before the child enters the world for three trimesters the mother is bonding with that child and so mothers have that opportunity to have a bond and to become a mother to that child even before the child is brought into the world but a father is born the day the child is born 
Let me say that again. A father is born the moment the child is born. And when, the, when, we, when we see, as fathers I'm speaking now, when we see the child, something instinctively kicks in inside of us. Uh, we start to get a protective edge over the child. Suddenly, uh, we, we realize that we have to be the covering of the child. It's, it's instinctive in us that we need to protect that child influence kicks in. We grab the child and we, we realize that we become influencers over the child. We want to go and bring the, the, the milk and, and, and we want to be the provider for that child. So provision on the inside of us kicks in. But some men become overwhelmed by this and instead of being drawn to the child, they are drawn away from the child and many times uh, uh, when when responsibility has to be taken by a man and it becomes overwhelming the things he should be doing he tries to escape from it and becomes an absent father uh, because maybe he never had a good role model to what it is there is no textbook or an instruction manual to being a father I tell you what, it's easier to become a father in a moment than it is to get your driver's license. It takes longer to get your driver license and it's quicker to become a father. And so we have to uh, learn, we have to develop into becoming a good father. This morning, I'm going to use, and because we have different role models as fathers, and sometimes uh, we, we've seen how people treat their wives and may not be the correct way, and we have adopted that way, thinking that that is the good reference point. I am going to use God, the Father, as a reference point this morning. Are you ready? Now, First time we see God speaking is uh, when he speaks concerning his son. I'm talking about the New Testament. I'm talking about the New Testament. Let's go to Matthew chapter number 3, verse 16 and 17. The Bible says, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting upon him. Watch this. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You hear the voice of God the Father at the baptismal ceremony of his son. Mark chapter 1 verses 11 records it like this. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And just for continuity in the story, I'm going to uh, refer also to Luke chapter 3 verse 22 because he also captures the narrative. All right. Now, Matthew and Mark are speaking about this uh, uh, baptismal ceremony when Jesus uh, is going through the waters and we find that God opens his mouth in the New Testament. Please watch this. Follow me. When God wants to send his son, through the womb of Mary, he does not speak to Mary directly. He sends Gabriel, the angel, to speak to Mary and say, you are going to conceive a son. Now you must understand, if you're a Bible student, and, and even if you're not, I'm going to just try to help you. From Malachi to Matthew, there's 400 years gone by, and the earth has not heard the voice of of God. Now, when Jesus is going to be born, even God doesn't speak to Mary, but he sends an angel. But at the baptismal service of his son, the Father of heaven, the God of heaven, speaks concerning 
is son's baptism and for the first time you hear the voice of God after 400 years speaking about his son and he rises and says this is my son in whom I am well pleased and you hear the voice of a father being a godly father means that you must show up when things are going down. Let me say this again. John, uh, Jesus was going to be go, going underwater and it is a, an auspicious ceremony where he's going to be baptized uh, and God shows up. I come to tell you on this Father's Day that when you are a godly father, it means that you must show up when things are going down in your child's life. Uh, uh, you have to be a present father. I want to just talk about present and absent. Uh, absenteeism and presenteeism. Presenteeism is a word uh, that's described when you are present but still absent. I pray that we will not have presenteeism in our raising of our children where you are present uh, but you are not present in their lives. So there should not be presenteeism. Now, notice, notice, when, when Jesus is being baptized, nobody prays to God the Father. But God the Father shows up. Notice that a real dad does not need a special invitation into their children's lives. Let me say that again. A real dad does not need a special invitation to the events of their children or to into the activities of their children's lives. A, it is a father's right and responsibility to be in the, in, in the, in the child's life. Uh, let me say this, uh, between me and my children, uh, now they married and uh, that, that's, that's a different scenario. But when I was raising them, my children did not have a right to privacy disclosure. As long as they are under my roof, uh, they are under my covering. And that's why a father is the head of the home. And so as long as they are under my home, they are under my covering. And there is no privacy disclosure between me and my children. I have a right to ask them, what time will you be coming back? Who are you seeing? Who are you talking to? What, what are you watching? They don't have a right to that kind of privacy. And by the way, when I ask the question, it's not to infringe on their right, but it is to carry my, out my responsibility as a father to protect. And so when we ask those questions as a father, it's not just to ask the question, but it is a question of covering headship and protection. And you must understand that. And that's the natural instinct. Who's that? Who are you speaking to? Where are you going? What time will you return? It's not to be hard or a disciplinarian or a general in the army, but it is there for your protection. So I trust that uh, that's, that's going to just uh, uh, bide well with, with, with most of you. All right. Um, let me just say this. Many times uh, we, 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 we say we are providing Fathers uh, assume the role of provider. There's more to the role of provider. We should not only be giving them a living and miss their life. Let me say that again. We're so busy giving them a living that we miss their lives. Don't allow the function of provision to consume all other benefits of a father. Let me say that again. Don't allow the function of provision to consume all other benefits of a father. All right. Now, let me go a little deeper. Watch this. Folks, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, we find there's a voice. It says, and lower voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That's chapter 3. 
In chapter 3, you have a voice of confirmation. Uh, voices of affirmation and confirmation are very important. God knows what to say in chapter 3. This is my son. As a matter of fact, when, when I was studying this, uh, I think it's Matthew says, This is my son in whom I am well pleased. And in Luke it says, um, uh, Thou art my son. Thou art my son. So in, in Matthew, it's a public declaration. And in Luke, it's a private conversation. Uh, I think you must, must study that. And so that, that's very important as well. I'll come back to that when we speak about love unconditionally. Now, watch this. In Matthew chapter number 3, God or the voice of the Father is speaking into his son and telling him who he is. He's saying, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. In Matthew chapter 4, immediately, it doesn't take you to be a rocket science. After 3 comes 4. In Matthew chapter 3, God the Father in his wisdom is telling him, who he is. Because in Matthew chapter 4, he is going to be tempted and the, the temptation of the devil says, if you are the son of God. That's powerful. Because at the, he's going to face baptism in chapter 3 and he's going to face temptations and trials in chapter number 4. In chapter number 4, when Jesus faces the enemy, and the enemy says, if thou art the son of God, and Jesus already kicks in and he says, my daddy already told me who I am. My daddy already prepared me by speaking into my life. Let me say that again. In chapter 4, when the real stuff in life happens, Chapter 3 also already prepared me for the chapter 4 in my life. And that means my daddy already prepared me for the trial and the temptation that I will face in life. Now, now that's, 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 that's powerful. Over time, we speak into the hearing and the preparing of our children. And we help them to face their trials and their temptations. Uh, I am going to continually speak to my daughters. And I'm now going to speak to my granddaughter. You know, when I see my granddaughter, the first thing I say, princess, man, you are beautiful. Why am I doing that? So that uh, I'm preparing her for a future compliment of a no good man who will use compliments to get to the emotions and the heart of my daughter or my granddaughter just to get her to spread her legs. I want to tell you this this morning that I am going to tell her before she comes to the trial and the temptation of the situation that she is beautiful. No person is going to touch her emotions unwarrantedly because I have already told her, you are beautiful. A male, a man, a father has already confirmed her beauty in her heart. I'm going to tell my sons and my grandson that you are bright. You are intelligent. That is good, boy. Because when a teacher with bias arises and tells a child he is no good, he's going to know that a father spoke before the temptation and the trial arose in chapter number four. In chapter number three, the chapter of my life that shaped my life, uh, my father already told me who I am. I don't know. Uh, let's go. Can, can we go a little deeper? Can we go a little deeper? Or, or let me just camp on that. Uh, there's a story. I like the story. It's, it's, a, it's a Bible story. <laughs> I'm joking. It's the Lion King. And in the story of the Lion King, there's uh, Mufasa. He's the, he's the head of lions. But the uncle of Mufasa has a plot to kill him. And he does. And uh, then the son of Mufasa, who is Simba, 
Simba is growing up and uh, he's now on, on the retreat, losing battles, uh, although he's the son of the, of the Lion King. But, but uh, Simba comes into contact with Rafiki, a monkey. And the monkey tells him that your dad is not dead. But uh, Simba says, my dad is dead. Uh, Rafiki says to him, let me show you your dad. And he takes Simba to the, to, the, to the river. And he asks Simba to look into the waters. And inside of the reflection, the reflection of Simba's face transforms into Mufasa, his dad. And his dad speaks to him in this, in this reflection and says, you are more than what you have become. You are more than what you have become. You are more than what you become. And Rafiki is stirred up by the declaration of his father in that water image. When a dad tells his child who he is, it gives him strength and potential to fight battles. Let me say that again. When a dad tells his child who he is, he gives that child strength and potential to fight future battles. And that is why in chapter 3, God tells Jesus, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And Jesus goes on to fight battles. I tell you what, when you start to tell your child who he is, he starts to arise to fulfill the role of the spoken word of his father. In the midst of weakness, he has the strength of the voice of a father. Fathers have a decree in their mouth. Fathers can declare a thing. Fathers can decree a thing and it shall be established in their children. On this Father's Day, I want you to change your words. I want you to speak confidently over your children and tell them who they are. Tell them truly who they are. Will you do that? Will you do that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the last thing I want to speak about uh, this, uh, in this message is that a father loves unconditionally. You must see in Matthew chapter 3 that uh, God says, this is my beloved son. He publicly declares uh, to, to all those that are hearing, this is my beloved son. But Luke says uh, that God says to Jesus, thou art my beloved son. So one place, one, one, one writer is showing a public declaration whilst the other writer is showing a private conversation. I think it's important to have private conversations to our children and tell them that we are well pleased with them. Um, notice this, that God is telling Jesus that he is pleased with Jesus at his baptismal ceremony when he has not even undertaken his ministry. He's not done any miracles. He's not raised the dead. He's not done any works as yet. But God tells him, you are well pleased. Fathers, a father's pride is not attached to what they do, but it's connected to who they are. Let me say that again. A father's pride is not connected to what the child does, but to who the child is. And so we, are, we must always energize the child. When a father um, speaks into his child, we energize the child when we show our love. The love of a father energizes the child. The greatest gift you can give to your child is not a Mercedes Benz and all of those material things, but the greatest gift you can give to your child is unconditional love. Now, when we do loving, we don't uh, uh, spoil the child. And let me just say this. I'll never condone your wrong, but I will love you unconditionally. So, and this is where fathering is often confused. Even spiritual fathering. Uh, you, you are not expected to turn the eye to wrongdoing. We bring correction. We bring reproof and rebuke. But we never stop loving. And that's very important. I always uh, say to, to parents, uh, never discipline your child with the hand that you feed the child with. Uh, that's very important because we're sending out mixed signals. And so you cannot rebuke and reprove 
and not love. There's, 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 there's a, a difference. And I hope my church will understand uh, rebuke and correction and understand love. It, uh, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot not discipline or bring correction and say that that is in the name of love. Because then you hate uh, your household and your child and you are, you are steering it in the wrong direction. And so, a father's heart is one of love. And I, I want to conclude by, by saying this. Uh, uh, maybe you can say this to your child too. If you graduate with honors, I love you. But if it takes a little longer, like eight years or nine years, we're going to talk. But I'll still love you. If you exceed my dreams and reach the destiny of your life, I will love you. But if you disappoint me with your decisions, I will still love you. If you get married and produce a family that we can all be proud of, I will love you. But if you love somebody that's hard for me to understand or accept, I'll still love you. And so, a father's heart is one that loves unconditionally. As I, as I put this in a capsule because time is against me and I know that you have to have enough time to go out and enjoy your time with your family and I'm going to release you in a few moments. I want to just end by, by, by putting this in a capsule. Number one, always as a good father, show your presence. Number two, use your voice and speak to their possibilities. And number three, extend your love unconditionally. Um, Data is against me. Time is against me. And I would have loved, loved, loved to have greeted every father, even shake their hands and give them a great man hug. But uh, I'm sending that to you right now as a spiritual father to all of the fathers that are watching me, to all of the men that I am influencing, even as a potential father, I speak to the sons of the house. And, and that's another thing, you know, with all of the gender-based violence, I think we need to speak to the sons to respect the girls, to respect females, uh, to treat them the way we would treat our sisters and our mothers. And so this morning, again, I just want to say a happy Daddy's Day to every dad that is watching me. And I want to say again, it is an honor and a privilege to be addressed by the title of dad. Will you not forsake the responsibilities, neither give up the rights of that title that the word dad confers upon you. Allow me to pray for dads and then confer a blessing in the benediction over your household. Heavenly Father, as I stand on this altar this morning, I pray for every dad and I release the Spirit of God the Father upon every father that is presently watching me. I pray God that courage will arise, that wisdom and understanding will come to them and that the frustrations of being a provider and nurturer and one or oh God of a dad will be removed and the peace of God will settle upon every heart of a father. I've tried my best, oh God, to release what you've released into my spirit. I pray that they will do their best to receive it into their hearts and to be better fathers from this moment on. And now, Father, upon the general congregation that watches me over the air, I speak God's blessing for a blessing is not a blessing until a blessing is spoken. I say, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And the Lord give you peace. Peace by the true definition of peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Shalom to you. Shalom to your house. Shalom to all therein. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's been a joy to minister to you this morning. And uh, I want to just again say, have a great lunch. Have a great dinner. Whatever you're having. Enjoy your time with your family. I'll see you on the other side of this virus. God bless you. Bye. Ambassadors, it's been amazing to have you join us today. It's such a blessing to be able to do church with you from the comfort of your home. 
We trust that you were blessed by today's powerful word and vibrant praise and worship. Now, remember to subscribe to our channel and share the link for this word to all your socials. Speaking of socials, are you connected with us? If not, check out our Instagram and Facebook pages where we post encouragement throughout the week. A special thank you to all the partners of our ministry that help build the kingdom of God through their financial contributions. If you would like to be a part of this, then scan this Zapper code now. You can also add us to your beneficiary list using these details. Thank you for choosing to fellowship with the Embassy Church today. We look forward to being with you again. Until then, stay safe and stay blessed.